Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the course Signals and Systems. Signals and Systems. And its subject code is 18 EC45. Uh, in, this, in this video, uh, I will tell you in brief what and all uh, the topics we will be covering in this course signals and systems now why signals and systems why why can't it be just a signal why can't it be just a system right so the thing is you cannot do anything just with a signal and you cannot do anything just with the systems so in order to modify a signal i need a system and in order to use a system uh, we have we need to have the signals right so that's why we have signals and system. So we have to study both. We have to analyze both signal as well as we have to analyze both. Uh, we have to analyze system as well. Okay. So basically, so we have a system. We have a system, right? Okay. And input to this system. Let's say I will call it as x of t small letter x of t if it is a continuous time signal and it is x of n if it is a discrete time signal okay uh, so we will be discussing more on this continuous time and discrete time in the later topics but for time being so the input to this system either i will send continuous time signal or discrete time signal and continuous time signal is represented by small letter x of t and discrete time signal is represented by small letter x of n okay so output output to this output from this system is either y of t or y of n okay so y of t if the system is uh, continuous time system and y of n if the system is discrete time system fine now graphically say i'm 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 feeding a sine wave okay so i'm feeding a sine wave to this system let's say x of t since it's a continuous time signal i'll call it as x of t x of t so this is the independent variable t the dependent variable x of t okay so this is zero volts this is i have an amplitude of a and i have amplitude of minus c fine so i have a system i am feeding this sort of signal continuous time signal to the system now what is the output from this system okay either it is an amplified version of the input or it is a compressed version of the input or it is a shifted with a positive dc or it is shifted with a negative dc whether it is integrated version of the input whether it is a differentiated version of the input so how do we how do we check how do we check what is the out, what kind of output we get for a given input okay so that's what we are going to study here so after end of the course given a system given a signal so you should be able to find what is the output from the system okay or given a signal given an output you should be able to uh, say or you should be able to analyze uh, what is the characteristics of the system fine now if 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 the system is an lti system if the system is an lti system so we can characterize or we can yeah we can say uh, uh, what is the system is doing uh, with impulse response h of t if i know the impulse response h of t small letter h of t or small letter h of n depending upon whether it is a continuous time or discrete time so i can i can actually easily uh, find out what is the output from this system if if i know the impulse response now the question is how do we find impulse response that's what we are going to deal or that's what we are going to study in this course fine and what is an LTI system? It stands for linear time invariant system. And what is this LTI system? Again, we'll be studying in detail uh, in the later part of the course. Okay. And uh, 
will be studying the types or classification of signals so, types of signals types of signals okay so after uh, uh, end of this topic so if i give you a signal you should be able to classify whether it is continuous time or discrete time signal you should be able to classify whether it is periodic signal or non periodic signal you should be able to classify whether it is uh, deterministic or random signal you should be able to classify whether it is even or odd signal you should be able to uh, classify uh, whether it is energy or power signal okay so we have 1 2 3 4 5 five types or classification of the signals so given a signal you should be able to recognize what type of signal is that okay now after that so we'll be performing basic uh, mathematical operation on the signal uh, given a signal i can actually add two signal i can multiply two signal okay i can subtract the amplitude of those signals and even i can shift the signal right i can shift the signal left i can scale it up or i can scale it down i can offset it up or offset it down okay so uh, and i can even perform uh, uh, shifting and scaling operation together we call it as uh, we will call, we usually call it as uh, precedence rule all those uh, mathematical operations will be dealing in details in this course okay so signal signal operation signal operation now with respect to system so given is uh, given a system uh, we have a few properties uh, we have causal or non causal system we have memory or memoryless system uh, we have stable or unstable systems we have linear or non linear system we have time shift time varying systems time invariant systems so on so these are all actually properties of system these are all properties of system so given given a system uh, you should be able to recognize its properties okay given a system you should be able to say whether it is a causal system or memoryless whether it has it is a stable system or whether it is time invariant or uh, it has memory and so on okay so uh, when i take up this topic when i am done with this topic and if i give a, give you a system you should be able to recognize its properties fine okay uh, in the later topic uh, say i told that it is an lti system uh, it has an impulse response of h of t and i am feeding the input as x of t okay now what is the output so y of t right and what is the output y of t y of t is actually input x of t convolved with the impulse response h of t okay so this is not multiplication operation this is the convolution operator which we will we'll see in detail when we take up the topic okay so this is actually convolution integral if the signals and systems what we are dealing here is continuous time signal and uh, it will be convolution sum convolution v o l u t i o n convolution integral if if the signals and systems what we are dealing is continuous time and it is convolution sum convolution sum if it is a discrete time signal okay and later later on so we also will be dealing with uh, these properties of system with respect to impulse response so given a system in terms of impulse response h of t or h of n given a system in terms of impulse response either in terms of continuous time or discrete time so you should be able to recognize its properties okay here the system is not in terms of uh, impulse response but here the system is in terms of impulse response okay so given a system in a mathematical notation or given a system in terms of impulse response you should be able to uh, recognize its properties fine and uh, i think uh, if we study these topics uh, we are we are done with actually two modules uh, in the third and fourth module so we'll be de dealing in detail with uh, about the fourier transform fourier transformation okay so given a signal given a signal in time domain x of t okay if it is a continuous time and x of n if it is a discrete time okay so we will be you will be when when we uh, you will be able to 
convert this signal into frequency domain capital X of omega or capital X of omega small letter or capital omega depending upon uh, whether the input signal is continuous time or discrete time okay now what is the tool we are using you are using Fourier transformation either we will be using Fourier series or we will be using Fourier transform depending upon the signal is periodic or non periodic okay so in module 3 we are we, I mean in module 3 and module 4 completely dedicated for Fourier series and Fourier transform also we will be dealing few properties of properties of Fourier transform and Fourier series so here here we also have to prove the properties we will be proving a few properties of Fourier series and Fourier transform and we will be taking a few examples uh, on how we exploit those properties uh, to solve a given problem fine and lastly in the last module module 5 we will be talking about z transform okay so why we use z transform what is the significance of using z transform in signals and systems uh, we will be studying it in more detail uh, when we take up those this uh, uh, module uh, basically it's a transformation tool where the input is the signal in time domain but make sure that it is a discrete time signal i cannot feed continuous time signal to z transform okay it has to be x of n if it is x of t i have to take laplace transform so x of n you have to feed discrete time signal to the z transform so output is x of z capital x so input is in time domain output is in z, z domain okay so so we will be uh, defining the z transform okay and we will be taking up the transform of a finite finite length sequence we will be taking up the transform of an infinite length sequence uh, infinite length right sided sequence infinite length left sided sequence okay so and we will be talking about uh, region of convergence and we will study how do we uh, recognize the region of convergence for a given signal as well as systems so, fine so in the initial part of this uh, module uh, we'll be dealing of we will be analyzing the transform for a signal and later on we'll be analyzing uh, taking the transform for a system and also uh, we will we will check how uh, for a given system how can we easily find out its property whether it is a causal or whether it is a stable system uh, by taking the z transform okay and at the end and at the end given a system in terms of difference equation uh, we can uh, we will be able to analyze the system for its uh, impulse response we will be able to analyze the system for its transfer function so we will be able to analyze the system for uh, its stability causality and given a system Give, uh, given a system given an input we can find out find out the output so this is what we will be studying in the course signals and systems it might be difficult to digest for you because uh, since it is an introduction part and I have uh, told so much so many new things but don't worry you will get used to it uh, we will be dealing one by one in detail uh, okay so in the next video I will start with defining signals Thank you.